My dad's famous saying is, it's not a sin to get knocked down, it's a sin to stay down. My father was a great boxing fan. He loved boxing. Two men get into a ring. At some point, one man may get knocked down. The man that gets knocked down has to find the courage, the fortitude to get back up, get in the fight. I was coming from combat duty in Iraq when I got the Red Cross message that my father was critically ill. I walked straight into my father's hospital room at the Portsmouth Naval Hospital. And having gone through combat, I was pretty beat up because of all the situations that I was put under. So I walked into my father's room complaining. My father was actually on his deathbed. I didn't know it at the time. And he looks up at me and says, son, what are you complaining about? I was doing my duty. I was healthy. I was strong. He was on his deathbed. He would have traded place with me in a heartbeat. And a few days after I got to the hospital and spent time with him, he died in my arms. His body just gave up. He'd been through so much and he just couldn't suffer anymore. So he, he left us. My father was Carl Bashir, a poor sharecropper son who joined the Navy. The movie Men of Honor is about my father who was able to overcome all types of challenges to become the first African-American diver in the United States Navy. In 1966, there were two Air Force planes conducting refuel operations off the coast of Spain. Those two planes doing that operation collided and dropped this payload my dad was dispatched as a Navy diver with his team to go over off the coast of Spain. The tow line was pulled so tight that the pole off the ship was ripped off and as it slung across the deck with so much tension, it caught the bottom part of my father's leg and nearly ripped it off right there aboard the ship. They decided that they were going to have to amputate the leg because it was mutilated so bad from that shipboard accident. The movie shows my father donning the Mark V diving suit, 300 pounds of helmet, breastplate, weights, and shoes. They depict him having to do a 12-step maneuver across a floor wearing all of that weight. That's a pretty light sentence for what my father actually had to go through. It wasn't just walking 12 steps. He had to do it daily for almost a year before the Navy finally decided he could be fit for active duty. He overcame racism. My father overcame poverty. He overcame illiteracy. He lost the bottom part of his leg and was physically disabled. He overcame his alcoholism. It took courage for him to admit he had a problem. He did everything in the gym that any person with two good legs could do. And as a child, seeing that, it just made me feel like my father was bigger than life. With that kind of influence, there's no way you cannot pick up on it and want to be the best you can be. My father wasn't the kind of person to let anything stop him. First time I seen a deep sea diver was down in Corpus Christi, Texas. So after seeing that doggone guy in the water, man, I thought that was the best thing since sliced bread. My Iraq deployment was with the Army National Guard in the state of Virginia. Our mission was basically troop transport and material movement. We did that day in and day out under the constant barrage of seeing tracer rounds, IED explosions. I remember a lot of heat constant heat, felt like a blow dryer in your face. I remember the, uh, the constant thirst. I remember the constant fear from getting that helicopter in a combat zone. But one night we got a call that there was a flash flood and that there were some Marines lost on a trail not too far from our base. And I remember getting out a couple of times, I would land my helicopter and help my crew chiefs retrieve those bodies that were caught in that flash flood. That's one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life was to get out that helicopter in a combat operation, retrieve a dead American, bring him back to safety so that family can have closure. I retired after Iraq. I was sitting at home going through my father's stuff one day, and I'm thinking to myself, my father never quit anything in his life. What gives me the right to quit just because my Iraq tool was pretty hard? So I joined the Army Reserve in 2009, Already the reserve gave me the great opportunity of being in command. I never would have had that chance in the Army National Guard and the reserve just gave me a great opportunity to be the leader. Being a warrant officer is so important in today's Army. We have to be able to focus on both entities to support both enlisted and officers and be a cohort in ourselves as far as being able to be technically and proficiently sound in our job. I feel blessed. To date I have 38 years of service in the reserve and it's provided for my family, it's provided for my children. I have three grown daughters and a son now who's an ROTC student. 
at North Carolina A&T University in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's just a great legacy to have my father, who's a Navy great legend, and then myself, a combat veteran in the Army. My son is gonna be following our footsteps with leadership and service to our country. A Swiss company wanted to make a luxury watch in honor my father. It's amazing that a Swiss company would take their time to honor a black man here in America. On the back of every watch, they have this famous saying, it's not a sin to get knocked down, it's a sin to stay down. If there's an obstacle in the way, you go around it, you go underneath it, you go above it, or sometimes you just have to go through it. But you don't let obstacles in life dictate your life. You choose to live your life.